Hey there guys, welcome back to another day on the ranch. We are out taking care of all the babies right now. Who are we gonna feed? And, and also Jensen. And Jensen, we're gonna go milk the goat. We're gonna feed all the babies. We got all of our stuff here. We've got feed for Thor. So here they have a mix of oats, alfalfa, and a little bit of sweet feed in there. And then we've got some goods here. Jensen had a bit overgrowth on her um, hooves when we got her, so I'm slowly taking more off. Um, we had a respiratory issue. I have to talk about that in our buckling. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then he had uh, ear mites, so we're using, I just got a new bottle of this. So we got that, we got this for respiratory. We got all the baby goat bottles. And the one. And then we've got a little herbal dewormer here for Miss Lavender. Girl, what are you doing? <laughs> She's waiting. <laughs> Climbed up. All right, come here, girl. Come here. There you go. Thing for the babies. So she has her bucklings off of her now. Um, we had to move him out because Sir was only six weeks old and was mounting already. It's not normally an issue if they're mounting. However, he was what's called fully extending, which is if you've seen a, a boy dog stick out their penis, it's the same thing. <laughs> so the chances of him getting him pregnant, very small, but we just don't want to take that risk. Um, with Nigerian dwarves, I've seen people as early as six weeks, their bucks, their bucklings got their moms or their sisters pregnant. I haven't heard that early from Nubians, but we just don't want to take that risk. So we moved the bucklings out together. Um, and it was good timing because we got a new buckling, which will actually be our future herd sire. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah, Ari has been doing a lot of milking. However, there's just a lot that has to get done with all these goats now. We've added a lot more goats. So usually an adult helps finish milking or does the milking some days. Like right now, she's taking care of the bucklings and socializing our buck, which is super important. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a team yeah. effort now. But they're definitely still like, this is Aries' thing. She's been getting better at milking, doing a good job. Did you swallow something weird there, River? She's eating a feed. Yeah, she has been eating more. Still has River, her doling on her, which I think we're going to leave her on. Because um, it's best for her, since we're going to be milking her, we want her to grow as big as possible and as quickly as possible. So leaving her on gives her that best chance. So we don't get a lot of milk from Ocean. It's actually the perfect kind of setup for Aerie to learn because um, she's not having to milk out. Like when Jensen here, Ocean, Jensen was her original name. That's her registered name. Um, if she didn't have her doe or buckling on her, if she was just, we were completely milking her, um, she'd probably give around a gallon a day. And that's a lot for a seven year old to milk out every day. If we wanted to keep her production at full amount, we would, you know, when we pulled her buckling off, we would have started at twice a day. Um, and so that would have gotten us probably at least over a half gallon a day from her. Um, but I didn't want to do that because again, trying to ease Aerie, who's only seven into this. Um, and we don't have like our proper setup yet for milking the goats, which we will come next spring when several of these ladies hopefully kid. Um, so, well, actually I take that back. We're not, we won't be breeding the two younger does this fall that would be too soon they'll be too young um so it would be like two years but we will breed um jensen again this fall to our buckling here onyx over there basically though just doing it this way keeping the dough on her but still sticking to once a day are we getting her max capacity and keeping her at like top production no but that's okay because i think it's like the perfect introduction for airy to learn and not have too much that she's having to do on her own um, we probably will go to machine milking at some point too. Um, and yeah, so I mean, that's just, that's what we're doing for now. It lets her still get to milk every day. And um, we just, we have a lot more babies that we're taking care of. What's up? Your, your arms are what? Hurting. Your arms are hurting, you need help? I found this, what I assume is like a hornet nest. Yeah, there's definitely something in there. So, I'm going to try knocking it down. Because I don't want it on the house right there. Man. Let's see if I can 
hold the camera and do this and not die all at the same time. Nope, not long enough. Oh, something just came out. I don't know what, where it went. Oh, that's it right there, right there. And there we go. My dad called and so I was on with him when I actually got it. Look at that. And I did end up killing it over there. So look at that. No more hornet's nest. So these are a couple of the stumps dead. <laughs> Started burning down at the pile. We've actually made pretty good progress. Practically all the brambles are cut down. Now we're just slowly trying to get stuff burned up. And these are giant stumps. These are only a couple of the many, many giant stumps that are in here. And the other thing about this is all of these stumps are just covered in dirt too. So that makes it even more difficult to try and get them all burned, but slowly but surely. Okay, so I just finished milking and we've had this patch of grass down here that is just really overgrown. It did extend over into the fruit trees. The problem with the cows wanting to go by the fruit trees because there's tall grass there is then they rub on the fruit trees, they eat the leaves off the fruit trees, not good for the trees themselves. And so Tim graciously mowed all around there. So now the cows don't really wanna go over there. And so at this point, I'm now able to uh, just run a single line electric kind of around this patch that is still pretty tall because I don't wanna mow it. I don't wanna waste that grass. So just put the cows over here. We'll leave them here probably most of the day. I mean, there's enough forage for these three. Um, these three are the, the best on the single line electric. The young ones, which are currently on the other side of the, the yard, they are not as respectful um, if they see other grass that they want. So um, I don't wanna bring them over here, but these ladies, are doing good. See, they're here. I don't even have to energize this line and these three, 99% of the time, won't bother with it. We're all out here feeding the kids. Kids feeding kids, right? And Mr. Thor here really wants to do some running, huh? And this is, this is what she does. She just tries to get in there. They do that sometimes. Hi, Brownie. Hi, Brownie. Oh, you're so precious. You are so cute. Came over by the pile. This is what I recorded last night. Look how much is gone. I am actually amazed at how small those stumps have gotten. I mean, obviously it is a hot fire, but. All right, so we're in with the bucklings now. So like I said, we separated them out for that reason. Um, this right here is Hemlock. He was the first one that we got. He is actually going to be a weather. We specifically got him. He, he's related to all the girls that we got. So we got him to be a weather for our buckling friend. Hemlock has had some health issues since we got him. Um, and we did just finally figure out what that was. We thought it was odd because when we got him, he, it was when the weather went from like 80 degrees to 40 degrees within a couple days. And so he was born in the 80 degree days and then it went out now into 40 and um, he wasn't handling it well, so we thought that maybe it was just because of that. He was shivering, um, and then the weather got warmer again, and he stopped shivering, but he had a cold. We did a lot of things to try and help him get rid of the cold symptoms, and nobody else was getting them, um, but he just couldn't get rid of it. And so we thought it was really odd. The vet was coming last Friday and to do some cow stuff, and so we had him look at this little dude and it turns out that he actually has a heart defect. He's got a heart murmur, um, a small hole in his heart. And he said that the heart murmur was really loud, which he said actually means that it's very a small hole because the smaller the hole, the more pressure that is being put on that hole. So the heart murmur is loud. A quieter heart murmur is more dangerous that usually means a big hole because there's less pressure. Um, that's how he explained it. So because it's a small hole, he said that's good news because um, he said the chances of it closing at this age, because he's already six weeks, um, now he's like seven weeks, because he's already seven weeks old, it probably won't close, but it doesn't mean that he can't live a normal life. He just might need a little more assistance. So we ended up actually doing an antibiotic for him to help him kind of 
kick it and it has helped. He, he's finally less congested. He's not coughing a ton anymore. Um, but basically he said, play it by ear. If he's constantly struggling, then we may have to consider um, putting him down. Um, but you know, it's gonna all be a quality of life question. And it's not anything either that was like the breeder's fault. So it didn't mean that like Ocean, his mom was like gonna be having kids constantly that had this issue. It didn't mean anything like that. Um, and so yeah, I mean, we're not breeding him. So if it was a genetic thing coming from him, that's not an issue because that was never our plan for him. But you know, we will weather him. The plan is for him to be our little buck's friend over there. Um, but we'll see. So far, the antibiotic did help. We're not weathering him till 12 weeks. So that's why we had separated him out. Um, and we're just kind of, we're gonna play it by ear, you know? He's super sweet, he's very friendly. Um, the thing that we always thought was weird was like, he always had this cold, but he never, he always had energy. Um, he's like, otherwise was normal. His famacho was back to normal. He had the mites problem, which was probably just to immunocompromised issue. He was just more susceptible to them, which caused anemia issues. So then he had a low famacha. The famacha is the color in their, their eye. Um, like when you pull back their eyelid and look under it, that says a lot about the health of the goat. And he was pretty pale, um, but it's, he's all back to normal and he was, and we still didn't know why he wasn't getting over this cold. And it was because of that. So yeah, we're just, we're keeping an eye on it and it's all gonna come down to quality of life. If he keeps getting sick over and over again and we aren't able to quickly give him the support he needs to get over it, then we will have to make that difficult decision. But you know, right now, the antibiotic has worked and you know we're not typically a farm that uses antibiotics on our animals when your animals are perfectly healthy and you're following good husbandry and especially with regenerative agriculture and keeping them you know their areas clean and all of that they typically with herbal support other natural support methods that we've been using we've had no issues and not had to use antibiotics but when it comes to life or death situations you know a heart defect that's just a birth defect you can't help them have a healthy body from the beginning to be able to be supported by those natural methods and have them work that is why conventional sometimes is needed and so for this little guy he's probably gonna need conventional sometimes um, so you know we're doing the best we can and we'll see as you can see he's got energy he's trying to eat Aries hair and everything <laughs> But little onyx there that Aerie is holding. Can you move him, Locke? Move, bud. Move, bud. He is our newest member of the goat herd, and he will be our future herd sire. So he is not getting fixed, so Aerie knows she's got to spend a lot of time with him, right? Yeah. So she has been loving on him extra and making sure that we have a super friendly buck. And yeah, we got him from obviously a different farm, so he's unrelated to everybody. Um, he comes from really good, solid milking lines, and I'm, I'm really excited about him. He's really sweet, and he loves cuddles. Dude, you are so... This guy will not stop. Stop! Stop trying to eat everything! So I don't know if it's made it into one of these videos yet, but we are building a tire retaining wall. That's the reason for all of these tires back here. And we are doing that to essentially raise the, raise the level of the ground so we can backfill and have a nice flat level surface up there to ultimately do a milking stanchion, like concrete pad and all that good stuff. So we've, we got the tires, what? It's probably two months ago now. A couple weeks ago, we actually, actually it's probably about a month ago now from, from that, that we got the first four tires in um, and now we're, we're just getting to work. So this is a long project in the making. It's going to continue to be a long project because uh, I think total work will use roughly 350 tires. And you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight tires packed, but we're making progress. <laughs> um, so yeah, just, we gotta clear out the dirt, level it, make sure all the tires are level, screw them together, pack them, tamp them in, nice and compact. And then uh, once we finish this bottom layer, honestly, this bottom layer, I, I believe will be the most labor intensive because we have to clear the ground, we have to level the ground and make sure all of these are level. Once all of these are level, going up additional levels or tiers within the wall, I think is gonna be easier simply because 
everything's already level. At that point, we'll be able to get some friends and some other laborers out here to, to help us do that. But this first part, like I said, is just very intensive trying to clear the dirt and all the grass, like all this, I just <laughs> use the pickaxe and I got to do all this up to all the way about there. Total, this is going to be raised up about six feet, give or take, um, to be level with the driveway. So a lot of work to be done, but we're making progress. So I got this one packed. Then it's a matter of just basically running this in a circle to make sure everything is level, level front to back. Probably, yeah. if you can try and pack that a little more. Which one? Uh, that side, yeah. So it's not quite touching, but it did raise it up. Just finished milking these two ladies. Well, not these two, but <laughs> Essie and Sadie over here. Now they're just getting some loving from the kids and I gotta go get Miss Annie from over there and get her back to the pasture. So this is the area that I brought, put the cows in the other day that I showed you. Uh, and you can see how short it is now. They mowed it all down. I mean, there are some tall parts over here in the little valley area, but they did a good job. They did exactly what I wanted. So currently I'm in the woods. Um, so previously we were talking about the dog fence and the dogs are doing really good with the electronic uh, invisible fence. And so now it's time we want to actually expand their area so we can get the pigs in the woods and we can move the, the cows back further to the back of the property. We could move the cows all the way to the back of the property if we wanted to right now. A um, couple of my concerns are they're like way like we can't see them. We have to go pretty good distance away from the house to be able to see them if they're all the way back here. And I don't have a nice solid fence back here yet. So I actually need to do the fence on the, the side that borders that nice pasture to get them back here. But I also want the dogs back here because I'm fairly certain there's predators in the back of the property back here. And so I want to make sure that they're not going to be, you know, seen as potential prey. Uh, so I wanted to get the dogs back here to be with them or at least have access to where they're at. So I've got uh, somewhere at that green line, you can see it. I basically brought it down from the house across the creek and now we're making our way through the woods and I've been using the brush cutter to clear a path down here. And this is the furthest back any of us have ever been in the woods. Um, so I cleared this nice path. This took quite a while because um, it is pretty thick. So I found this culvert that's just folded up back here. It is very damp back here, um, which I knew was likely to be the case. And you know, my suspicions confirmed, but look at, they just, I don't know if we've mentioned it before, but all of these pastures used to just be woods and brush. So they clearly did a lot of work, the previous owners, and they just pushed a bunch of logs and stuff back here. I mean, it, it, it's everywhere. Um, and then of course all the blackberries and there's the pasture. These girls, they love, they're up here cleaning out the garden and they love the rocks for itching. Look at her. You getting a good itch on, Ginny? Is that working? There goes Herm. She's about to do it. She like shoves her face into it first. It's pretty funny. Give your goats just a pile of rocks. They love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. They're funny. So, um, they are all super dirty because that dirt pile right there, hold on, actually you can see. Runa dug out a hole for herself so she's been laying in that and then the goats all lay in it too i think because it's really cool so that's why everybody's orange but <laughs> they are actually all leaving tomorrow rev pointed out today that we are selling our very first birth on the farm which is miss lily um she's right there so that's Ginny's baby that was the very first birth that we had on our farm um and they are leaving tomorrow so um i think we mentioned we decided to go with nubians so these guys are going to a pet home though. Um, there is a lady that 
recently bought some property. She used to have goats and she really just wants pet goats again um, and to help eat down and kind of uh, help fix the land that's been kind of neglected for a lot of years, she said. It's hard selling animals. We don't sell animals really at all. Um, we've only sold ch chickens, I think, um, and only like a rooster, I think. So this is like our first big animal sale too. And I can say it's really hard to like trust where they're going, but she asked all the right questions, um, asked for their vet records and what they're currently held in and at the price point I was asking for them because I have two Nigerian dwarf does they're actually worth a lot so I know they're not going to just end up at the butcher now at the end of the day as with all livestock if there's major issues sometimes that is what happens and I totally understand that but right now her intentions are fully um for them to just be pets and help clear out the land and if she wanted to milk the two girls and get them bread she could do that too um so yeah but they're doing good they're eating down but tomorrow they will be going to their new home four hours away